to Fire Emblem Three Houses. So in the last episode, we ended up taking on uh, the Dark Knight and his little band of forces that were like underneath the school or whatever, um, because they had captured Flame. So really quickly, I want to purchase some of the intermediate seals because I need to get our last two people up to the next level. So we're gonna buy all three of them just because we have a bunch of money at the moment. Okay, so Flane could become uh, she, she's currently in intermediate class right now. She's already already a priest and she could become a uh, Pegasus Knight, which could be really cool um, Anyways, we need to first class up Linhart and Casper because they did not get to in the last episode because we ran out of uh, What do you call it? We ran out of seals. So we're gonna start off and make Linhart a priest He wants to become bishop which well focuses done, mostly on magic, or uh, specifically faith, not just magic, because, you know, anyway. Casper can either become a brigand, which is he has 100% chance, or a brawler, which is 66%. And we're going to definitely go make him a brigand, because that's the smartest idea for him. Because 60% aren't 60 for oh, me. Yeah. Nailed it! And never they never are anyways pretty cool stuff now everyone has that uh, Basically their first ever not their first ever but their classes and holy cow. I forgot Caleb got up to level 15 <laughs> Bernadette got up to 14, which is really cool But before we do that we need to do supports because I we failed to get some supports between people last time because I did not end up doing these and uh, There's a lot of support points they could have been gained in the last episode but you know anyway let's start off here with Hubert and Linhart well this is fascinating following this equation Linhart here again I see go away Hubert now is not a good time ah yes the double line becomes a helix and its arc no that cannot be correct now is exactly the time Lady Edelgard requests your presence. Come. The lecture is about to start. Politely inform her that my research is vastly more important than whatever it is she has to say. While your passion may be admirable, it is sadly misdirected. This matter takes priority. Return to your hobby when your duty is done. Hobby? This research will most certainly prove useful in the future. The Empire requires you to be useful now. I should think you would want the same. You have an almost unparalleled intellect. A singular focus, an unfettered imagination. In truth, you have talents that many, including myself, will never have the privilege of possessing. Are you complimenting me, Hubert? That alone deserves to be studied. Let me finish. I haven't an ounce of respect for the cause you have chosen to waste your talents on. Which changes, frequently, I might add, with no rhyme, reason, or results. Learn to apply yourself to something constructive. You may still have a bright future. That sounds suspiciously as if you're not going to leave me alone. I just want to live a life doing things that interest me. Is that so wrong? That is unacceptable. Even for a nobleman. Her Highness will soon ascend the throne. She's attempting to deal with such noble privilege head-on. You have a point, and I understand where you're coming from. But I can't do it. I can't bring myself to work for someone else. Pathetic. Keep to your books, then. Goodbye, Linhart. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's move on with more Hubert. Let's do Casper. Yeah! I'm not finished with you. I am Casper! What's going on, Hubert? You need something? I watched you training earlier. Pitiful display. Ah, uh, excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? You yell before every move. I know. I do it on purpose. It's how I get fired up. Is that a problem for you? Be scared? Stupid habit. If you value your life, you'll break it. What are you talking about? It sounds like you might have a problem with me. 
As a matter of fact, I do. If it was only your own idiotic life at stake, I wouldn't bother saying anything. But it's not. Your foolishness hurts everyone. Ooh, you sure do love to hear yourself talk. Suppose you were to shout on the battlefield as you did in your training today. It is very likely the enemy could anticipate your next move based on your insipid blather. And what if your allies are startled by your outburst and fumble with their weapons as a result? This is not to mention the obvious fact that you would utterly botch any covert operation. You really think I'm that stupid? I only shout when it's completely necessary. I don't do it all the time. Whatever habits you develop in training, you will reproduce on the battlefield. Combat is tense and frantic. You will default to your training whether you mean to or not. Hey, why don't you just shut up about it? I can control myself. All right. <laughs> Hebert's kind of like that overly protective sort of... What am I trying to say? Man, I, I don't even really know how to explain it. All right. Hubert and Bertadetta. Um, Hubert? Yes? I just, um, I wanted to thank you for the other day, you know, when I fainted. Thank you for carrying me back to my room. That was nothing. It saved me effort in the long run. Leaving you there would have just caused even more trouble. I guess that's true. Well, thanks. There, I said it, and now I'm going. Is this why you've been circling me like a vulture for the last several hours? Uh, Vulture's a bit... well, yes. Yet you would have fled if I'd approached. It seems you will avoid me at almost any cost. Um, well, that's... You don't need to say it. I know. I'm frightening. I'm told so often. <laughs> Please don't laugh like that! Apologies. I will be mindful not to laugh in your presence from now on. <laughs> the grin of death itself! Terrifying! You think so? Oh no, now you're angry too! Hardly. I'm sorry to have frightened you. No, you're not! It's a trick! You're lulling me into a false sense of security! Ah, I can't stand it! <laughs> She's a lost cause. Honestly, like, really like you, Root. He's a, he's a very cool character. I remember watching that opening cutscene thing and seeing him staring in the back, and I'm like, what? <laughs> that was, it was, it was kind of funny. Anyway, uh, Hubert and Petra now. Petra? Industrious as ever, I see. Hello, Hubert. Yes, I am trying to be industrious. I must be working hard to improve my position. Right now, it is not a good one. Even accounting for that, your efforts are impressive. I wish a little of you would rub off on certain people here. <laughs> one troublesome slouch in particular. Rub? I will not be rubbing on anyone. Not literally. I never would have imagined you would adjust so well to life in Fodlan. When I first met you, you couldn't understand a single word of the language. You had the look of a cornered animal. So much so, I thought you'd grown up in the wild. I had more youth then, and the experience was... Uh, terrifying. My grandfather ordered me to go to Fodlan with suddenness. I was stolen to a strange land filled with strange people. The treatment I was receiving was like... Like I was a strange beast. It is unfortunate, but while you were called our guest, you were actually a hostage. You were meant to be insurance that Brigid would not restore its alliance with Dagda and attack us. The Empire required leverage, and after all, you are the Princess of Brigid. It gave me sadness to leave my home, but I am not unhappy that I came to the Empire. I have learned much understanding from the outside world. My experience has made me become who I am. And meeting you and Lady Edelgard has had great value for me. I admire your spirit in the face of adversity. You set a strong example to follow. <laughs> a 
and there is much more adversity to come. Alright, we are done with Hubert's supports. Okay, let's move on to Linhart then. Man, this is this might take most of the episode. Linhart and Edelgard. Hello there, Edelgard. Are you looking for something? You could say that. I'm looking for someone named Linhart who's been skipping lectures again. I see. Well, congratulations, you've found him. Did you want him for something in particular? What else could bring me here other than your complete negligence? Well, perhaps you're interested in hearing my latest theories on the nature of crests. I suspect the formation of crests may be quite different than that recorded in church tradition. Before you go on, is there any discernible benefit to me allowing this battle to continue? Well, of course. And that would be? <laughs> I suspect you'll find the topic rather entertaining. That's it. What more do you need? Crest research is its own reward. You know, if you ever truly applied yourself, you could become a distinguished scholar. You could use your crest knowledge to benefit the world or uncover new discoveries in magic theory. Why would I busy myself with such tedious work? I perform this research for my own knowledge. I'm not interested in the world at large. There's nothing wrong with a selfish drive for knowledge, but only if you put it to good use. I'm sure there must be some use. Oh? Then please, tell me what potential uses you have in mind. Well, there are people out there who spend good money on bizarre artistic creations, so I'm sure my not-at-all-useful research could be used as a fine lullaby for the children of the world. A lullaby? <sighs> I have things to do. Just know that this was my last warning. Sure, of course. Goodbye. All right then. Okay, Linhart and Ferdinand. <sighs> Just look at this place. It's so beautiful, I believe I should take a nap and enjoy it properly. Linhart, lost in thought, I see. Unacceptable. Are you not aware that a noble's duty is to be ever vigilant? Rest increases alertness. Is there something I can do for you, Ferdinand? Well, I was just passing by, and I thought I could give you a little advice. You always seem to be napping. Why not spend your free time doing something productive? Easier said than done, Ferdinand. I'm afraid I suffer from a constitution that tires easily. Hmm. <laughs> Some training will remedy that. Let us work on that today. I will train you myself. Arise, Linhart. The righteous path of the noble lies before you. You're always giving it your all, aren't you? Yes, I am. Is there something wrong with that? Of course not. In fact, I rather enjoy your demeanor. You go all out even when others wish you wouldn't. You work hard, inspire the admiration of others, and your dignity as a noble is beyond reproach. I consider it my mission to serve as a guide and a model for other members of the nobility. As capable as you are striking, Next to you, I am a mere infant. Oh, you are far too kind. Although I do work hard each day to achieve all of which you speak. You've mastered all the important noble skills. You drink tea, talk about how great you are, ride horses. Indeed, I went for a ride earlier today. Is that so? You'll have to tell me about it sometime when I'm not walking away. Hmm? Where are you going? I must get some sleep, being the infant that I am. Farewell for now, Ferdinand. Oh, noble among nobles. <laughs> noble among nobles? Seems a bit much. Did he say get some sleep? Hey, wait! <laughs> I love the, a lot of the, the dynamics that people and that everyone in this game has. So, next up is Linhart Bernadetta. La la la. Such lovely weather for painting. Bernadetta? Yes! Who are you? Where did you come from? It's just me, Linhart. What are you doing? Painting! Just painting! Not important. Am I in your way? I'm in your way. I'll just go. I'm going. No need for all that. I just came out here to read. 
I'll stay quiet and still so as not to bother you. How's that? If you want to go, that's fine too. Um, no, I'll stay. <laughs> Say, aren't you usually holed up inside? I fantasize about shutting myself in my room and never going outside again. It sounds like paradise. However, I wouldn't be able to perform my research. That, Bernadetta, is a problem. What? You admire me? Nah! No way. I know a trick when I see one. What are you plotting? So you want to copy me, is that it? And what to copy do with the original? Replace it! Well, I've got you figured out. I won't just sit back and take it. I'll fight you! What? That's no... Uh, this is too much hassle. I'm leaving. Oh, Bernadetta. <laughs> okay. Uh, Linhart and Dorothea now. Oh, I do believe a nap is in order. Ah, oh, this is lovely. Oh, just feel that breeze. Dorothea, whatever are you doing here? I was thinking of relaxing here, but it looks as if someone else is lounging in my spot already. Taking a nap in public like this? Really, Lynn. The nobles look down on such behavior. You do know I am of noble birth. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just teasing. You never do act very noble, though. Why is that? Each person must follow their own way. This is how I prefer to live. Even if some of the more pretentious nobles like to poke fun at my ways. Doesn't that bother you? I mean, really? doesn't hurt your pride or anything? What use is pride? It doesn't feed nor clothe you. It offers no warmth on a cold night. First time I've heard a noble say something like that. Well, most nobles are... Oh, what is the polite way to say it? Fools. Yes, they are fools. As for myself, my father is the Minister of Domestic Affairs, and he has pride enough for the both of us. For example, did you know he and the Minister of Military Affairs cannot get along, although they value each other greatly? His pride gets in the way, so he can't make amends. That is why there is discord between civil ministers and military officers in the Empire. And so pride serves no good purpose in politics, either. So tell me, what use is it? I wonder if bad blood between civil and military leaders is somewhat unavoidable. The Minister of Domestic Affairs is in charge of all civil officials, so if they just give in easily, their subordinates would lose respect, right? I get the feeling that if your pride isn't equal to the responsibility you bear, then you aren't fit to lead. Also, I happen to think pride can be quite charming. And how necessary is charm? It just gets in the way of living your life. If you lack charm, nobody will give you a second glance. Right. Which means more time for napping. Lynn, uh. you can't really believe what you're saying, can you? <laughs> Alright, Linhart's final support with Petra. Petra, would you pause a moment? Yes? Are you wanting something? I was observing your spear work, and I wonder if you don't think your transitions are sloppy. The way you move your arm before a strong thrust hinders your movement and slows your spear on its way back. It leaves a rather large opening. Which arm? My left or right? I think the right... No, actually it's both. It's something about the way you move your elbows. I am not understanding. Can you show me, please? Demonstrate? No, I'd hate to get sweat all over my book. But I must correct this. Please. Or are you unable to do 
and you can only teach. I am more of a theorist than a practitioner. I advise and you implement. Very simple. Then, please advise again. It's all quite simple. Sometimes you make a big stab downwards, right? Before that, you lift up. At that point, you sort of let the tension go and stop. It ruins the momentum of the stab. How can I be lifting up with no... no unnecessary movement? It's the arm movement that's extraneous. Calculate the locus of the spear and the elasticity of the muscles. Locus? Elasticity? Can you not just be showing me? Please. If you are showing me, I will learn it with quickness. I won't waste your time with such demonstrations. You're a smart one, Petra. You'll sort it out. Besides, I need to go now. I have a prior appointment to keep. Linhart only likes talking. It is on myself to prevail. Yeah. And unfortunately... Just, yeah. Okay, anyway, Bernadetta has one with Casper. And that one goes there. Perfect! Oh, hey, Bernadetta. What's going on? Enemy! He's here! We're under attack! Help! Someone! Anyone! I love the music that plays, like, every time she freaks out. It's like, it's literally perfect. It's like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> help! I'm the one who came here for help. I guess I'll just take care of it myself. I can't believe I got hurt trying to break up someone else's fight. It's ridiculous. All I do is step in to calm them down, and the next thing you know, they're both at my throat. Hey, you ever been in a fight? Fight? You're challenging me to a duel? No, 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 I can't! I've never fought anyone in all my life! I surrender! You win! Uh, alright. That was easy enough. Not to be rude, but do you ever think that maybe your attitude makes you a little unapproachable? You should try stepping outside and socializing. I'm sure you'd make friends in no time if you didn't waste it all in here. Outside? In no time? Oh, sure, yeah! Why didn't I think of that? Well, maybe it's just not as easy for me as it is for you. Did that ever cross your mind? Why wouldn't it be? Making friends is easy. This one time, I even made friends with someone I'd just been in a fight with. I think it was the gorgeous view that did it. <laughs> uh, we really shared a moment. Come on, let's go check it out. <laughs> uh, hold on! What are you doing? Please don't touch me! Ah, let me down! Let me down! Calm down. I'm just gonna carry you out of here. Easy does it. <laughs> And here we are. See? That wasn't so bad, now was it? And what about this view? Gorgeous, right? So this is what death is like. Didn't expect it to be so... such. Come and claim me, sweet death. Sweet pea. But first, let this evening sun wash clean my imperfect soul. Hey, now don't go dying on me, Bernadetta. It's just the sun. Huh? What? Where am I? Oh, it's pretty. Such a lovely view. <laughs> oh, Bernadetta. All right, next up with Bernadetta and Dorothea. <sighs> it's peaceful here. Flowers are so calming. Just looking at these, it's like all the terrible parts of the day just disappear. If only people could be more like flowers. <sighs> What's Byrne doing? She looks like there's something wrong. All these nobles are just terrifying. And the commoners? Just look at Dorothea. So pretty, popular, dazzling. There's no way someone like me could ever be close with someone like that. Byrne, are you okay? <laughs> Dorothea! Did you hear all that? Just the part about you wishing you could get along with someone. So, Burn, who have you got a crush on? Seriously, now, you have to tell me. Who are they? Do I know them? <sighs> I'm so excited for you, Burn. Um, n no. I was actually thinking about being friends with you. Me? 
I thought we already were friends. That's not what I mean. Oh, I'm such a coward. I thought it would be great if we could be closer. But old memories just get in the way for me. Burn, whatever happened in the past, you know you have my full support. I'm here for you. I thought we'd already been friends for a long time now. Please, just forget it. We'll never be close friends. Father would just... He would just... <laughs> no! Wait, I... Father? What did she mean by that? Yep. Alright, finally Bernadetta and Petra. Hunting? Really? There's no way I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I have stayed in today? Bernadetta, is this a trouble you are having? I heard that the duty to hunt is yours today. The duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my room. Do not be worrying. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it as an enemy. That is how prey thinks. You must think of the beasts as food. That is how the hunter thinks. So it's not an enemy, it's food. But, um... How is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. Those have life too. It is the same. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. You cut their stalks and harvest without mercy. They do not scream, but you are still their killer. Killer? Fruit ripens and falls to the ground. The seeds sprout and a new life is born. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. You must be killing to be living. Maybe, but I don't know if I want to be some... some kind of vegetable murderer. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. The only difference being that they cannot cry out. You must do what you must do to be living in this world. It is your task. A task? Yes, just a task. A completely mindless task. Feel it. There, in the grass. Prey is moving. Just like a vegetable in the wind. <coughs> give it an arrow, just like you would give a vegetable a blade. It is just your task. Uh, right. That makes sense. It's just like cutting a stem. You are now a hunter. You have learned how to hunt. I am? I have? Oh, good! What a relief! You have understanding now, I can tell. Great! Leave it to me! I'll hunt down my prey just like their vegetables! I have belief in you. Aw, thanks, Petra! I can do this! Make way for Huntmaster Bernie! Have luck, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness. Okay. Now let's move on to Petra. Petra has got one with Casper, Ferdinand, and Dorothea. Ferdinand? Our professor is wanting to see you. Hmm. He has much concentration right now. I will wait for him to be finished reading. Hmm. -hmm. Diplomacy has an effect upon weapons development. Yes, that makes sense. Oh, Petra! How long have you been there? A short time. You were devoting all of your attention to that book. Forgive me, I was fully absorbed in my reading. I see you have been reading as well. Anything interesting? I am studying the history of Fodlin. A history book? What a keen student you are. And it's about House Hressfeld. Certainly a stimulating topic. I am wishing to learn all about Fodlin. What is the book you are reading? Oh, this? This relates to a little hobby of mine. 
the regional history of weapons development in Fodlin. Militaries have to adapt their weapons according to terrain and climates, and they have to keep up with technologies in other regions. It's very interesting. Yes, it is interesting. I see why you would be enjoying that kind of reading. Oh, does that excite your curiosity too? Perhaps you would care to read more about it then. This is just one of 18 volumes, and our library has the entire collection. I give you my gratitude. Research of weapons could be a good reference for me. Oh, please take my apologies. I was meaning to tell you that our professor is wanting to see you. Oh, it is not like you to forget something. I suppose I ought to be going then. All yes, right. it is a rarity that I forget something. But it is not impossible. I mean, you didn't technically forget. You mentioned it already. But he wasn't listening, so... Okay, now uh, Petra and Casper. All right, time for some more... Oh, Petra. Hi. Caspar, do you want to train with each other? Uh, yeah, sure. You have had new training recently, and great improvements. I want great improvement too. Will you give me help? Well, hey, look at that. You pay more attention than I gave you credit for. I have been trying new training methods. They're definitely paying off. My movements are much sharper lately, more precise. I am knowing that. I want that too. You teach, I learn. We both get more strength. It will be greatness. All right. I mean, I guess we can give it a shot. Um, Petra? Yes, Kaspar? Um, no, uh, never mind. Sorry. I was just thinking about something else. Nothing at all. Let's train. I heard a question in your voice. Say it. No, no, no. It's really nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. I will not be worrying. Can we begin the training? Ah, fine. We can talk about it if you insist. You can stop pretending like you don't know. What am I knowing? About my father. Your father? He is of the military in the Empire. I hear he has great skill. No, not that. Well, it's kind of about that. I'm talking about when Dagda and Bridget invaded the Empire. My father led the Empire's army that fended off the invaders. Your father was in that battle. Did you really not know? My father killed yours. Small you... fucking world! How long have you had this knowing? I just found out recently. I had no idea before then. But it's all I've been able to think about since. So, now you have the truth. Petra? <sighs> Damn it. What am I supposed to do now? All right. And finally, Petra and Dorothea. Petra, how are you doing? Getting used to life here? I am settled. Everyone shows great kindness. I'm glad to hear it. I was so surprised when you first arrived. A princess all the way from Bridget. You have my gratitude. But please do not call me princess. You are making my cheeks blush. There's nothing to blush about. You're every little girl's dream of what a princess should be. Anyhow, I suppose it's been a long time since you've been back to Bridget, hasn't it? I hope you aren't homesick. Maybe we can cook one of your favorite dishes from back home. I do wish for that. But there is no possibility. The ingredients are not found here. I suppose you're right. That's probably why they don't cook the food of Bridget in the dining hall. I'm sorry. I just got to thinking about how hard it must be to live somewhere so far away from home and... No, it can't be impossible. I'll fix you a real meal of Bridget. I'll just find a recipe and similar ingredients. Wait, Dorothea. It is the thinking that counts. But your cooking is... What is the word? Horrendous. That is what everyone is saying, anyway. Horrendous? Nobody's cooking can be that bad. The thinking is enough for me. You have my biggest gratitude. Fine, I'll do something instead of cooking for you. I just want to be sure that you feel at home here. How about a massage? That may <laughs> help you loosen up. I have no problems. 
My body is already able to relax. Oh? Then perhaps I could sing you lullabies to help you sleep. I'm not having sleeping trouble. Just know that you never have to worry about putting me out. I like helping my friends. Well then, I must be going, but remember my offer. Dorothea is filling my heart full. That's sweet. Okay, next up we have Edelgard with Casper and Dorothea. Training again. You're certainly working hard, Caspar. <sighs> oh, Edelgard. You scared me. You should have said something. I did, but no matter. What has your training with such intensity? It's never good to neglect one's training, but overdoing it is ill-advised as well. You could already give any student here a battle they wouldn't soon forget. You think so? Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I can't really stop training, though. I gotta get better if I expect to get anywhere in this world. If memory serves, you're the second son of House Burglius, right? That's right. My older brother is the heir, and there are already too many mouths to feed in our family, so I can't count on any support. I pretty much have to make it on my own, you know? I understand. It's difficult being born a noble. Those who inherit everything also inherit great burdens. But the same can be said of those who inherit nothing. What are you talking about? I don't have any troubles. Who cares if I don't inherit anything? It just means I get to cut a path to my own future. You know what your problem is, Edelgard? You always have to make everything about you. Are you picking a fight, Kaspar? Hey, now come on. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. Always happy to fight, though, if that's what you want. Uh, I have no desire to bicker with you. Good luck with your training. Goodbye. What was that about? I'll never understand her. All right, then. All right, next up, Edelgard with Dorothea. Hey, Edie. Uh-oh, you're scowling again. You're going to get wrinkles all over that cute face of yours if you don't smile more. <laughs> Hello, Dorothea. I was just lost in thought. There are so many things to be done, to think of them makes my head ache sometimes. So many nobles of the Empire are utterly useless. When I am Emperor, I intend to appoint only those who can actually be useful. It doesn't matter if they're of noble or common birth. Noble or common, eh? Can you really do that? I mean, not that I don't agree. I'd make all those nobles vanish if I could. It's not a question of can or cannot. All that matters is doing it and doing it right. The nobility system has only been around for 1,200 years. The concept didn't exist before that. Only 1,200 years, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you always say such preposterous and extraordinary things, Amy. Yet somehow you actually make it work for you. It's like you're a character from an opera. A character from an opera? Hmm. If an opera is made about my life someday, I wonder how I'll be portrayed. The revolutionary who guided the Empire to a new dawn, or the foolish ruler who took her revolution too far. Well, that all sounds pretty violent. But either way, it would make an incredible opera. Do you figure it'd be a grand action piece full of combat and strife? Or would you prefer a somber political drama? Hail the mighty Edelgard, the red blood stains her story. Heavy as her crown may be, she will lead a soul to glory. To a brighter dawn we shall carry on. Hail Edelgard! That's quite enough, Dorothea. I'm starting to feel more than a little embarrassed. Didn't really fit with the background music. Lovely as your voice is. He kinda, let's just hope that any clashed. operatic productions about me are still a ways off. All right. Next up is Ferdinand. Oh, he has, does he have one with Caleb? I don't know, whatever. Anyway, Casper. That settles that. And don't even think about brawling around here again. 
Impressive, Caspar. Well done. Hey, Ferdinand, did you see that fight? I saw it from start to finish. Both parties were at fault, disturbing the peace. Then you stepped in and corrected their behavior. You are setting a good example. I am proud to call you my fellow noble. Your fellow noble? I wasn't even thinking about nobility. It had nothing to do with it. Excuse me, nothing? Resolving conflicts among common folk is a duty of the nobles. Is that not what you were doing? I guess so. But it was more like instinct or something. I saw people acting out of line and I had to step in. Ah, you were acting on impulse. You might be better served following moral convictions rather than instincts. Take me, for example. I always bear in mind that I am a noble and behave accordingly. The fortunate must help the unfortunate. That is my guiding principle. I never have any idea what you're talking about. If someone's in trouble, you gotta help them out. Simple as that. Hmm. A difference of opinion, you might say. Very well, then. Believe what you will. I will not expend energy trying to change your mind. Maybe all of this noble stuff just isn't for me. Th hey! Don't walk away when I'm talking to you! Alright then. Next up is Ferdinand and Dorothea. Okay, that's it. Ah, you have arrived at just the right time. Care for one of these handmade treats? My goodness, Ferdy. When did you become such a talented confectioner? <laughs> oh, Dorothea, I am hardly an expert. Nevertheless, you have managed to make some tasty-looking treats. Well, it is the first time I have tried my hand at it. Honestly, there were several unsuccessful attempts preceding this batch. I made these pastries to solve that riddle you gave me. The reason you despise me. Oh? You said I was like a bee. The bee is a dutiful worker, just as I am. But the bee inherits a capacious home with a wealth of honey. Similarly, I inherited my fortune. I did not receive it as a reward for my labor. I surmised that perhaps you'd feel differently about me if I earned something all on my own. That was my plan, to emulate your transformation from desperate pauper to successful songstress. All on your own? Did you renounce your nobility? Give away your riches? No, I made these. I obtained all the ingredients on my own, without anyone's help. You mean, you got the sugar and the flour? Yes. To earn the flour, I worked in the fields. To earn the sugar, I carried a merchant's wares. Who did the cooking? You? Naturally. I took on some extra chores in exchange for use of the kitchen at night. I have to admit, that's impressive. Hey, it looks like you had a bit of an accident. Is your hand okay? I burned myself a little while I was baking. Nothing to worry about. Nonsense. That burn will scar, you know. Come on, let's get you to the infirmary. <laughs> Wait, Dorothea! You have yet to try my treats. <laughs> you should be fine now, Ferdy. Big shot nobles have to treat their bodies with care just like the rest of us. There you go again. Noble this, noble that. Though you did say it with less disdain than usual. <laughs> Nothing gets past you. As it were, I may have reconsidered you a little. You have reconsidered me? Finally! Just as I had hoped, we are becoming friends. Now then, I propose that we... I only said I reconsidered a little. And you still haven't figured out why I said you're like a bee. Which is funny, because you look like a bee right now. Bye! So, I am still a bee. A completely mystified bee. Alrighty. Alright, next up we have Casper and Dorothea, and this should be the last oh, one. Caspar, just who I was hoping to see. I have a tiny little request if you have time to help me. I'm always happy to help. What can I do for you? That is exactly what I was hoping to hear. Would you mind coming along to my room? Your room? Uh, okay. <laughs> this uh, isn't what I... Uh, 
had in mind. <sighs> Come on, a big strong guy like you. <laughs> this is easy. Lift up the cabinet, please. I need to dust behind it. There's still more to do. Why do you care so much about keeping this place clean? It's just a dorm room. Were you raised in a stable? Leaving this place a mess wouldn't be fair to the next person who uses it. In fact, I think once we're done with this room, we should clean up your room as well. Yeah, I don't think so. I have some actual training to do. Oh, come to think of it, I have a date myself. The fella I'm seeing has quite a charming face, rich family, and I assume a tolerable <laughs> personality. Don't you get tired of spending time with all these guys who have tolerable personalities? Oh, it gets tedious at times. You must listen to them talk, for one thing. But it's important for my future. That's how I see my training. I guess it's pretty much the same thing. I don't know if that's a comparison you really want to make. Why not? Seems about right to me. Sure, I'm a noble, but I'm also a second son. I don't have anything coming to me. Why do you think I'm always training so much? I need to prove myself on the battlefield if I plan on making it anywhere in this world. I know you don't have noble status or wealth, so you're putting in the effort to marry wealth, right? See? Pretty much the same thing. I suppose. It would be nice if everyone saw it that way. Well then, Kaspar, I need to get ready for my date. Shall we both agree to work hard for our futures? Absolutely. I just hope our efforts are worth it. Alright. There we go, we finally finished all of the supports, and honestly, that was an episode's worth of stuff on its own. So, I'm gonna end this episode here. Uh, this will be kind of a bonus episode. Anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed this episode of Did I Expeciated. Uh, yeah, it was kind of nice to just sit back and listen to everybody just talk and learn a li little bit more about all the characters and watch them build the relationships between each other. So, anyways, thanks, thank you all so much for watching the video. If you all enjoyed Did I Expeciated, subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later. Wait.